friends welcome to science jagat today we are going to talk about autoimmune diseases so the questions we are going to solve are what is autoimmune disease how is it different from normal immune response how is an autoimmune response created type of autoimmune diseases possible factors responsible tests used for diagnosis of autoimmune diseases and some of their treatments so first let's see what is autoimmune disease see autoimmune diseases are a case of mistaken identity in which the body's immune system which ordinarily attacks intruders like viruses and bacteria attacks itself okay so there are more than 100 different autoimmune diseases some of which involves a single organ and other that attacks nearly any organ or multiple organ or tissue uh, are also present there so there is an example of it is lupus Okay, so a healthy immune system defends the body against disease and infection. But if the immune system malfunctions or disturbed, it mistakenly attacks healthy cells, tissues, and organs of our body, causing autoimmune diseases. These attacks can affect any part of our body, weakening bodily functions and even turning life-threatening. So, in normal immune response. an invader like virus enters the body and then immune cells called lymphocytes create antibodies to fight invaders whereas in autoimmune disease immune system creates antibodies that attack your own cells this happens because a foreign substance resembles bodily substances or normal body cells become altered or lymphocytes malfunction and make abnormal antibodies what are the autoimmune responses see when say a virus enters the body it mounts a immune response right so lymphocytes and other immune cells rush to rescue creating inflammations t lymphocytes are a part of innate response and functions to eliminate any type of intruder whereas b lymphocytes are part of the learned response and produce antibodies that specifically target the threat so ordinarily the immune system does not attack the body's own cells and there are several regulatory steps that work to prevent autoimmunity so before going further i want to tell you that autoimmunity does not necessarily means autoimmune disease fine for example if the body may produce antibodies against itself that are involved in cleaning up debris after an infection also right so when an autoimmune disease occurs the reaction causes inflammation and tissue damage so there are uh, several different ways in which autoimmune reactions may be created uh, so these includes when a foreign substance or microbe resembles the body cells an example of this is rheumatic fever in which there is a protein found in group a streptococci bacteria that resembles a protein which is present in the heart muscle cell so as a result antibodies recognize it as non self and start attacking the heart muscle cells fine so next one is when normal body cells are altered and how it could happen uh, for an example when uh, a virus intrudes a cell or invasion occurs in a cell then the cell alters fine and then our body start recognizing it as non self fine now when immune system cells that make antibodies which cell make antibody that is b cell lymphocytes right so when uh, these kind of cells malfunction and make abnormal antibodies that attack normal cells in body when a substance in the body that is normally hidden from the immune system enters the blood stream and triggers a response for an example the fluid within the eye hmm, which is normally does not comes under blood stream but when it suddenly enters the blood stream it is recognized as non self okay now the possible factors of autoimmune disease includes infectious disease it's thought that autoimmunity may occur when a component of a virus or bacteria resembles protein in the body or by the infection ramping up the immune system so some specific microorganisms which are linked with autoimmune diseases are epstein barr viruses and cytomegalovirus group a streptococcus bacteria second factor is environmental factor 
that is uh, a lack of sunlight, vitamin D deficiency, certain chemical exposure, and some other environmental factors. These are also linked with autoimmune diseases. So there is a theory, the hygiene hypothesis. This theory states that people exposed to fewer antigens in the uh, early stages of life are more likely to have a dysfunctional and overactive immune response in later stages of life. Then is lifestyle. Lifestyle, smoking. Smoking, of course, uh, increase the risk of rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases also. Uh, like Graves disease and multiple sclerosis, then is obesity and Western diet, so which is high in fat, high in sugar, low in protein and high in salt. And these diets are also thought to promote the development of autoimmune diseases. Then is gut bacteria. So several research are pointing towards a connection between the balance of bacteria that lives in a person's digestive tract. We also call it as gut flora. And many health conditions include autoimmune diseases. Now the genetics. So there are several autoimmune diseases which carry on or which appear in generations after generations in a family, right? So there are research going on in progress looking at specific genes which is specific for a particular autoimmune disease. Okay, now let me show you. These are the organs of the immune system. This is tonsils and adenoids, thymus, lymph nodes, appendix, spleen, bone marrow. And these are the factors related to autoimmune diseases. Heredity, white blood cell, lifestyle, hormonal influence, environmental factors. Uh, let's see a few examples of uh, autoimmune diseases. Multiple sclerosis. Systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and here are a few symptoms. These are joint pain, pulmonary fibrosis, impaired vision, skin rash, myocarditis. Okay, so next is the types of autoimmune diseases. Right? So there are two types of autoimmune diseases. See, autoimmune disease can affect a single organ or multiple organs. So each disease is characterized by unique antibody that can detect and target a specific protein which is present on the cell and it is called as antigen, right? So some of these antigens, if they reside on a single organ, then it causes an organ-specific autoimmune disease. But when they exist on many or multiple organs, then we call it as systemic or generalized autoimmune disease. So first, let's, let's, uh, let's focus on organ-specific autoimmune diseases. So some of the more common uh, autoimmune diseases are included here. One of them is autoimmune thyroid disease, that is Graves disease. It is one of the cause of hyperthyroidism and it's caused by an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland that leads to the overproduction of thyroid hormone. And the treatment includes antithyroid medi uh, medications, radioactive iodine therapy and surgery which uh, occurs very rarely it gets chance of surgery right so here you can see normal uh, eye but when in graves disease the eyes look bulging right eyes bulge out now normal thyroid gland and enlarged thyroid gland normal eye and exopathalamus eye so these are few symptoms of Graves disease. Now comes hypothyroidism. It may uh, cause symptoms like fatigue, constipation, weight gain, hair loss, and the condition is treated with lifelong thyroid hormone replacement medications. You might have seen people are taking um, you no know, tablets of thyroid hormone, right? Okay. Then comes type one diabetes. Uh, we also call it as uh, type 1 diabetes mellitus and the name is juvenile diabetes okay so it often arises during childhood and young adulthood and it occurs when autoantibodies destroy the beta cells which are present in the pancreas and these cells are responsible for making of insulin in the body so if these cells are destroyed then of course the balance of insulin would be 
disturbed. So symptoms may include thirst, increased urination, and when it gets severe, it can lead to diabetic coma. So diabetes uh, 1 is treated with lifelong insulin replacement. The person has to take injections of diabetes, oh, sorry, uh, injections of insulin and carefully monitoring is needed to avoid severe fluctuation of sugar and uh, to avoid diabetic coma, right? Now the third one is psoriasis. It occurs when the immune system sends signal to skin cells to grow too rapidly. So excess of cell division starts because of the fast growth, fast cell division, right? So plague psoriasis is characterized by raised red patches. You can see it in the picture, right? And these red patches are called as plagues. So that occur most frequently um, under the knee or above the knee, lower back, scalp and elbows. And the treatment options depends on the severity and the type of uh, cells it, uh, it is uh, causing cirrhosis in. And it is important to screen for a related autoimmune condition that is uh, psoriatic arthritis. Then the fourth one is multiple sclerosis. So it is a condition in which autoantibodies attack the fatty sheath of myelin. This myelin sheath covers the nerve fiber at the exon part and it helps in the proper transmission of the signal from one neuron cell to another, right? So this disease can have many different symptoms depending on the affected area of the nervous system and it includes change in the vision, <coughs> sorry, muscle weakness, numbness or pain, loss of balance, difficulty with cognitive functions, mood changes tremors, etc. So the fifth one is Guillain Bear syndrome, right? GBS. And it is a condition in which autoantibodies attack the support cells that line nerve cells, right? It often occurs after a viral infection and it's thought that portion of the infectious organism resembles the part of the nervous system. And there's a subtype of GBS that is Miller-Fisher syndrome and GBS often uh, you know, begins with weakness and changes in sensation in the forelimbs and hand limbs and it causes paralysis of the diaphragm and requires respiratory support with a ventilator. Now let's move towards systemic autoimmune disease. So systemic autoimmune disease can be felt over throughout the body because it affects multiple organs, right? So first is systemic lupus erythematosus, also called as lupus. It affects multiple organs and the symptoms of lupus may include joint pain, skin rashes, kidney problems, inflammation of the lungs, heart, anemia, increased clotting, memory problems and more. So treatment includes sun protection, smoking cessation, medications with steroids like corticosteroids, anti-malarial agents and immunosuppressive drugs. So you can see in this picture the type of rashes person get in this lupus erythroma metastasis. Right? Now comes rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by pain, swelling, joint damage and it is more severe than osteoarthritis. So without any early and aggressive treatment, deformities of joints usually occurs and the same joint is uh, affected at both the side, the dorsal and the ventral side of the body. And the small joints of the hand and feet are often involved. So in addition uh, to joint inflammation, which is called as synovitis, people with RA may develop lumps beneath the skin. That is called as subcutaneous nodules and pleural effusion. So inflammation of the lining of the heart also occurs that is called as pericarditis and many more other symptoms are also there. So the next one is inflammatory bowel disease with disease which includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So it refers to the inflammation of the digestive tract. So while Crohn's disease may cause inflammation of the whole digestive tract from mouth to the anus. Uh, the ulcerative colitis only affect the colon and the rectum area. So symptoms may include diarrhea, abdominal pain, 
bloody stools, weight loss and fatigue. So treatment often includes a combination of medications and it can uh, be you know, cured by a surgery and both the conditions can lead to colon cancer. Then comes antiphospholipid syndrome. It involves autoantibodies against certain proteins in the blood, so which results in abnormal clotting. And it is often diagnosed in women and it can cause miscarriages and preterm births. And when blood clots or bruising occurs without any obvious causes in the body. So the formation of clots can lead to heart attacks or strokes. So there isn't only one single test that can diagnose autoimmune diseases. There are many tests. So I have summarized only few of them. So let's see erythrocyte sedimentation rate test, C-reactive protein test, complete blood count, comprehensive metabolic panel, anti-nuclear antibody test, rheumatoid factor test, thyroid peroxidase, antibodies test, and some imagining studies may be used when evaluating specific symptoms related to autoimmune conditions, uh, such as x-rays of joints that are swollen, right? So there are many more other uh, um, tests which are specified to the symptoms. So there are certain risk factors also like sex, if you are a female or a male, age, weight, ethnicity, geography and for coping up with these kind of symptoms and diseases, you should practice good sleep, you should practice exercise, practice stress management and know your triggers. Right? So with some conditions, there are triggers that are associated with flares of the disease. So it's helpful to identify them and then look at ways to reduce your exposure to those triggers. Right? So this is all with the video. So I hope you find this video informative. Do like, share and subscribe if you like the video. So meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.